if you do come across a snake and you can ID it as something that's potentially venomous, what should you do about that? Anything? Ignore it? Uh, kill it? Do? Well, <laughs> that's a that's a really good question. Um, I think I would just let it go on its on its merry way and just try to stay out of its way. Why not? Um, unless it was you know moving towards my, my one of my kids or something, I don't think I would probably do anything. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, you know, I, I avoid uh, telling people what they should or should not do, and I talk about what I do, and you know, it's not. You know, we've already talked about these animals are hard to find. So when you do stumble across one, it's a unique opportunity to kind of observe it, uh, learn more about its behavior, mm -hmm. uh, and, and just see what it does. It's really you're really not in danger, even if it is a venomous snake. Um, and something that I talk about in the book, this is really difficult for I think folks to wrap their head around. It's more dangerous to kill a snake than it is just to watch it and go away even if that means that snake is alive for a day someday in the future it's when we're messing with snakes that's when the vast majority of problems happen uh, so i don't encourage people to do that it's again it's hard to wrap your head around when there's a snake in your yard uh, but I'm, so i'm talking in general and then i think that you know killing that snake having your kids kind of learn that that's what you do about snakes that's kind of setting them up for dangerous interactions too yeah i think watching where you put your hands and your feet observing snakes letting them go on their way that is the solution that's the way to reduce your chance of getting bit yeah and is there are there certain behaviors aside from you know actually attacking a snake that are dangerous say you know putting your hands into cracks and crevices if you were out hiking or climbing i think climbing i could see being a real hazard because you're maybe reaching up at somewhere that you can't see yeah yeah don't stick your hands where you can't you know definitely not in logs or in holes or things like that i'm imagining climbing and i'm imagining kind of a barren rock face and that's not really a good snake habitat so i wouldn't yeah. expect one to be kind of in there but yeah if there's tunnels you don't want you don't want to be walking barefoot in the swamp or in overgrown uh lawns things like that yeah um those that, that that's probably pretty risky but you know even if you step on a snake and i know a lot of people who have done this they don't bite you yeah don't try this at home <laughs> but if you mess up and step on a snake, there's a good chance it still won't bite you. Yeah. So it, get, it kind of gets back to that idea that they're they're somewhat defenseless and, and would probably rather just get away from you than, than have a battle. <laughs> what does a snake have to gain by fighting with you? Mm -hmm. The best, best case scenario is that it ended up where it was before, by itself with nobody bothering it. And so if you're already by yourself with nobody bothering you, why would you fight a giant predator just to get back to the same spot? Right. But if you make a snake fear for its life, it will defend itself. Uh, and some snakes do have pretty good defensive strategies, including venom.